The Dojo supercomputer is Tesla's behind-the-scenes powerhouse, aiding in the development of the company's AI capabilities. Currently, Tesla has 14,000 NVIDIA A100 graphics cards clustered together across three data centers that it uses to train neural networks. The goal of the Dojo project is to effectively replace the future purchase of new NVIDIA graphics cards with Tesla's own chip that should be faster, cheaper, and take up less space in the data center. Elon Musk has even stated that Tesla won't need to buy as many incremental graphics cards next year in 2023 as Dojo is phased in. It's unlikely that Tesla will ditch its current set of NVIDIA-based data centers as they're expensive and they work quite well for many applications. But Tesla is looking for something much larger to process and train with a crazy amount of compute-intensive video data. Now, shortly after last year's AI Day in 2021, it was unclear if the Dojo project would even continue or would be shut down. It seemed like it may have just been something cool that Tesla could do, but they didn't appear to be at a stage where they could actually confirm the real Dojo production specs to be better than their already established NVIDIA-based data centers. At the time, Tesla had just produced a small number of Dojo chips and had barely put together one of their compute tiles. And so going from the prototyping phase into production may not yield the results Tesla was looking for. In Tesla's fourth quarter conference call, which occurred in January of this year, just about four months after Dojo was first unveiled, Elon Musk was asked if Dojo would be ready by summer. To which he responded that while Dojo seemed to be on track for doing something useful by summer, their NVIDIA GPU cluster was getting better and better. And so this was a moving target. He went on to say that Dojo wasn't needed for full self-driving, which sort of downplayed its utility. The goal Elon Musk set out for his team was that they needed to tell him that they wanted to use Dojo instead of the GPU cluster, hinting that it may not be needed. On top of that, Elon Musk proclaimed that he wouldn't say success was 100% certain here. So this gave a pretty bleak representation of the status of the Dojo project. And Dojo isn't needed for full self-driving, but it would certainly speed up the rate of progress. While things weren't looking up at the beginning of the year, it seems that a lot has changed in this relatively short period of time. At AI Day 2022, Tesla spoke about solving complex problems that they had with early Dojo chips. They've also filled us in with many of the missing pieces and question marks from Dojo's initial launch, and they've created truly breakthrough technology in order to really move forward with their vision. And now, Tesla is finally ready to actually mass produce this insane supercomputer. And before I continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. Tesla's VP of Low Voltage and Silicon Engineering, Pete Manin, began the talk on Dojo's hardware progress. He's well known for previously working at Apple before coming to Tesla and leading the team that created the first 32 and 64-bit ARM processors inside the iPhone 5 and 5S respectively, and he has 40 years of experience designing chips and computer systems. Pete Manin outlined the challenge at hand for Tesla which is that some of their neural networks may need to be trained for up to a month, which really limits the software team's ability to rapidly explore and evaluate alternatives. If this could be shortened down to even, say, a day, then the team could iterate much faster, and consumers would benefit by this by seeing better performance in Tesla's FSD beta, for instance, or more features with each update, perhaps even more frequent updates. One of the design decisions that Bannon and his team made early on was not to use DRAM, and this is a typical type of RAM or memory that you would find in your home computer. Instead, Dojo would rely on a much faster form of memory called SRAM, which is built into each Dojo chip. DRAM, or Dynamic Random Access Memory, is typically external to the computer's processor and sits on the motherboard, whereas SRAM, or Static RAM, resides much closer to the processor. SRAM uses six times the number of transistors compared to an equivalent size DRAM, making it much more expensive. And therefore it has lower capacity, but it's extremely fast. And because it's built right into each Dojo core, it physically sits close to the compute units that need to access this memory. When Tesla revealed the Dojo specs last year, 
people were confused as to why each core only had 1.25 megabytes of memory. This doesn't seem like much. And even with 354 cores in each Dojo chip, that's still only about 440 megabytes of RAM per Dojo D1 chip. But what Tesla has done here is eliminated many of the things that take up a lot of space within the memory, especially in an unpredictable fashion. They have removed virtual memory and interrupts. For example, if the processor is working on something, it can unexpectedly receive a signal from another process that interrupts it, in which case it needs to remember its current state so that it can come back to it later. So it pushes this current state into memory to save it and then works on something else in the meantime. But since interrupts are non-deterministic, the amount of memory required can't be predicted ahead of time. Dojo gets rid of all of this and is just a bare bones accelerated machine in which Tesla's compiler predictably schedules tasks to be computed. Elon Musk always asks engineers, what did you remove? What did you undesign? As he says, good engineers usually fall into a trap of optimizing something that shouldn't be there. And so by taking these unconventional approaches, Tesla has built something that Pete Banning calls radically different from what's out there. Dojo isn't really just a chip on its own. It's an entire vertically integrated solution. As Tesla's senior director of hardware, Ganesh, discusses, the entire data center was redesigned from the ground up to deliver the proper power requirements and cooling needed for Dojo. Typical data centers have various limits, especially on the amount of power your system can draw, and Tesla didn't want to be bounded by this since Dojo was built to scale indefinitely by connecting more and more chips to each other. At one point, they said that they were load testing an insane 2.2 megawatts of power, and so the entire Dojo data center needed to be built from scratch. If you look at Tesla's voltage regulator module, this is one of their breakthroughs, bringing a huge amount of power vertically into their chips, and they show how small it is next to a quarter. The module is capable of delivering 1,000 amps of current, and they say the current density is unprecedented. George Hotz, who runs Comma AI, a company basically competing against Tesla in the full self-driving space, spoke about this, and he was amazed at this vertical power delivery and compared it to a traditional card which is built more horizontal, and you can see the advantages in reducing the size of the chip by making use of the three-dimensional space. Bringing things closer together makes them faster, since it takes one nanosecond for light to travel 30 centimeters. When you're running at 2 gigahertz, for instance, meaning 2 billion processor clock cycles per second, every fraction of a nanosecond counts as they start to add up to be meaningful in terms of speed and latency. It was also interesting to see Tesla talk about one of their challenges, which was causing intermittent hardware failures with their new design. They showed some of the tools that they used to debug the problem and find the issue, and then make changes to various components and materials in order to fix it. So Tesla didn't just slap this together, it's custom design and they have tools to make sure it's running well and they have fine grained controls over manipulating its design. Now this next part is very interesting. Tesla filled in the blanks on how it actually forms the Exapod server rack out of Dojo tiles, something they didn't talk about last year and I'll give what I think is a fairly good analogy to better explain what they're doing. First off, they have a custom tray that holds the Dojo tiles but also connects them together through a mesh of wiring and provides power. Surprisingly, this thing needs to hold 135 kilograms or about 300 pounds to support six Dojo tiles. Next, Tesla created the Dojo interface processor, which they say is for staging their training data. This is where the DRAM or dynamic random access memory actually is being used. Tesla earlier said that they didn't use DRAM, but they're not using it on the Dojo tile itself. This is in a separate card off the tile. Each of these cards has 32 gigs of RAM, and they're going to be using 20 of these cards paired up with each set of 6 of these tiles, giving them a total of 640 gigs of RAM as an intermediary for storing data which will be used by the Dojo tile processors. Above the processors here, it looks like Tesla's custom chip that they use to connect to the Dojo tiles. These use Tesla's own TTP or Tesla Transport Protocol which is their own super fast communication protocol. They say here it can do 900 terabytes per second. There's also an ethernet port for further connectivity, but what I found most interesting is that they're using a standard PCI Express interface. 
This is used for connecting devices to your computer. For instance, if you buy a desktop computer, it comes with some PCI Express slots, and that's where you could connect a graphics card, for instance. Tesla is doing the same thing, except Tesla's graphics card is this massive setup of Dojo tiles. And you actually see here, this is where the Dojo tiles plus the 20 PCI Express cards effectively combined, this is the graphics card, just connects right into a host computer which sits underneath. And that host computer has an operating system running on it, it happens to be Linux, and users can schedule whatever work they want to run on this system. But instead of going to the graphics card to do the intensive processing, it goes to the Dojo configuration. It's a pretty insane computer that this is running on, with 512 x86 cores and 8 terabytes of memory. It looks like a custom 4-node blade chassis, where each node has dual 64-core AMD CPUs with 2 terabytes of RAM in each node. And each node has 5 of the Dojo interface processor cards, they call them DIPs, and likely 5 Ethernet network interface cards, or DNICs, which don't seem to be shown here. So in all, it's a custom powerful server setup that connects with PCIe to the Dojo tiles. And they also say that the host interface has hardware video decoder support, meaning that they can decode video data quickly with dedicated hardware, which is ultra fast, since they'll be training mainly using video data. Now Tesla showed the exact same software stack that they did last year, nothing here has changed. Anything with the word Dojo in it is something that Tesla had to make themselves. So they had to write their own drivers, for instance, so that the Dojo works with their host computer. And the user only needs to write their own code in PyTorch, which is a machine learning framework using Python, which was originally developed by Facebook and is open source. And once the user decides that's what they want to run, it looks like the user selects the size of their accelerator so that their model fits, and then the compiler does all the heavy lifting. And they show an animation of how the compiler may split up the data to be computed in an efficient manner. So was it worth it for Elon Musk to direct the company to build Dojo? So far, the Dojo tiles seem to be unmatched by quite a margin in many areas. One Dojo tile is 30 times faster or less latency than 24 GPUs. However, looking at real-life use cases, together, auto-labeling and their occupancy network take up about half of their current GPU cluster. So these are the most common operations. It would be nice to speed those up. And so it looks like they can achieve over three times faster auto labeling and over four times faster for the occupancy network using the production hardware that they plan to produce in the first quarter of 2023. Even with the current hardware, it's still faster. Now, something to keep in mind is that a 4x speed boost could bring down a month worth of training, which in some cases, Pete Bannon was saying that some of their neural net training needs to run for a month. It could bring that down to a week meaning they can try four alternative models during that saved time. Furthermore, Tesla says they can replace six GPU boxes with just a single Dojo tile, not only in terms of compute, but also on price, so it's six times cheaper as well. This translates well to the server racks as they scale, where they can replace 72 GPU racks, I guess what they have currently running in their data center, with just four Dojo cabinets. So it's freeing up all that space and it's cheaper to get the same performance. But obviously they're going to go a step further. By the first quarter of 2023, Tesla will build their first exapod, which is 10 cabinets. So clearly they haven't done that yet. And that will give them 2.5x their current auto labeling capabilities. And they didn't say when yet, but they plan to build seven of these exapods in Palo Alto. It also looks like based on their timeline that shortly before AI Day 2022, they ramped up to building one training tile per day. One exapod uses 120 training tiles, so they can build three per year at this rate, although they'll likely increase the rate at which they build these tiles in order to get seven exapods sometime in the near future and not in three years. And crazily enough, they still see a way to achieve a 10x improvement from here, with version two of all of their different components coming sometime in the future. But that would mean a single Dojo cabinet would replace 180 racks of GPUs if they can get there. If Dojo is not already a game changer, then it certainly will be. Now, Elon Musk is asked about turning Dojo into some AWS-like service, that's Amazon Web Services, and he sort of says yes to this. However, I don't see Tesla becoming anything like AWS. 
AWS is a gigantic platform with hundreds of different services that Tesla has no reason to get into. They would be up against established players but with no real edge, and it would take years and years to catch up to where Amazon is today. So that doesn't make much sense. Tesla's senior vice president, Drew Baglino, also said on the conference call earlier this year that it's possible that Dojo could be used as a training platform for other companies, but that's not their focus right now. I think that if anything, if Tesla really wanted to open this up to others, which would end up being years down the road, they could do it on their own, but maybe they could partner with Amazon or Microsoft or Google to have their unique Tesla Dojo service as an addition, as one extra service on these already existing platforms, which would give it more reach and accessibility. So you could log on to your AWS or Google Cloud account and select and pay for this service powered by Tesla in the back end, and both Tesla and the cloud provider would have a profit sharing agreement just as other services do. And so Dojo is still trying to stay ahead of a moving target, so it will need to continue improving rapidly over time. But in terms of AI, Tesla got to where they are today with full self-driving using their three data centers totaling 14,000 GPUs. However, with seven exapods, that seems to be roughly four times larger in compute power than their entire three data centers combined. Elon Musk is always talking about the pace of innovation, and if Dojo can multiply the current rate, it will vastly improve Tesla's AI software, leading to better consumer products and services. So when do you think Tesla will have its seven exapods ready for production, and how do you think Dojo will transform Tesla's AI capabilities? If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about Dojo, have a look at the in-depth video I made based on last year's AI Day, which is still very much relevant today. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.